Hey everyone, Stax here, and I am so far behind on getting stuff out. It, my whole week has been off because I showed up to the comic shop on New Comic Book Day on Wednesday, and I forgot my wallet. So I had to come back on Thursday and finally pick up my book. So my whole week has been a day off. And then just with everything going on, I have not had a chance to sit down and do a video, which stinks because it's been a great week for great week for comics. Had uh, Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, Curse of the White Knight come out, which is absolutely amazing. Had Jonathan Hickman's House of X, which I just got done reading, and it is fabulous, and I plan on doing a review on that. And of course, Guardians of the Galaxy number seven, Donny Cates, where, I mean, I've loved this series from the from the word go and we're getting into the second storyline of it and this book doesn't take any any breaks it jumps right into it and it starts with the symbol of the universal church of truth and for those completely unfamiliar with it it is a church that was set up a bunch of religious followers that followed the magus the last time we saw the magus Ultron was punching a hole in him and leaving him for dead during Infinity Prime, which was a prelude to the 2017 Infinity Countdown that was followed by the 2018 Infinity Wars. Now, why does that maybe matter? Because at the end of that, Magus was, he goes, he's like Adam Warlock. He goes into his cocoon when he dies and he's reborn. And when Adam Warlock sent Gamora to, and I'm quoting here, the place where she could do the most good, and he didn't even know where that was, she arrived with the Magus as he emerged from his cocoon. So the last time you saw him was marching off into the sunset with Gamora. Something else that's interesting is their ships, like this giant one that just arrived called Cathedral, they run off of the faith of their followers, which is really weird, really crazy, but hey, it's comic books, right? So this ship Cathedral has arrived, and Novacore is on site checking it out, seeing what's going on with it, seeing where this thing came from. And while the officer in charge here has just about the whole Nova Corps there, he actually phones in or radios in and says, hey, um, I'm seeing a lot of wreckage here. These guys don't seem overly friendly. Um, how about some more backup? And they're like, hey, the only backup available is uh, Ryder and a handful of others, so you, you're all we have out there. You gotta do it. They also mention in this conversation back and forth that this is the largest concentration of tachyon yield they've ever encountered in this or any other sector so when he starts asking questions he's like Are you telling me this thing's from the future and he's like uh, well we're not telling you anything and right as this happened a giant doorway opens up and a robed figure with two huge armed guards step out and this robed figure just simply tells him hey stand down our path doesn't concern you Novacore dude's like hey no we're Sorry, it does, and he simply tells them, hey, let it be recorded by your world mind that we gave you a chance, and bless you all for your sacrifice. Have faith. So he just steps forward, tells them to turn on the engines. The two guards there just stutter, have faith, and the general there is telling them, hey, turn around and drop your, and this whole emblem begins to light up, and these tentacles break out and just start grabbing all the members of Nova Corps. And while all this chaos is going around, they're over the radio saying, hey, we're getting these weird readings. What's going on? And they're yelling back that it's cold. It's, it's hopeless. There's faith. And right then they're saying, what are you doing? And he's actually, the, the general is reaching up and taking off his helmet and, and saying, have faith as he chokes to death. Back with the Guardians of the Galaxy, Gamora and Star-Lord are talking about what they're going to name the the new ship that they just procured. When Groot shows up at the door telling him, look, Peter, you gotta come listen to this. And what it is, it's a message from Star-Lord's father. And I've never known how to pronounce this, if it's Jason or Jason, or J I think it's Jason. But he's taking his fleet and he is going to attack the Universal Church of Truth. He goes ahead and he tells him, look, Nova Corps has pretty much been wiped out. I, I'm sending the Spartax fleet uh, and this, if there's any indications, look, I'm sorry, I've been a horrible dad, and I regret that, and at that point, he's told he's, they're coming within range, and when they do, he gets hit with the same blast that Novacore did, and the last thing he says is his eyes turn purple, is have faith. And despite his father saying right before he died, don't come here, 
don't come here, you have to run. I'm sorry. He says all this, what's the first thing Peter does? Looks back over his shoulder with a tear in his eyes and tells him to plot a course now. That's right, they hop in Starship Bowie, which is the name of the ship now because of Gamora said it should be named after a pretty man. And they go, and nobody even questions it because they all know that Peter, that Star-Lord would do it for them. They don't even hesitate. Then when they arrive at the site, Star-Lord tells Moon Dragon and Groot to stay on the ship, keep it ready to roll out of there. Lockjaw, when it's time, he transports them onto the enemy ship, and they m immediately jump in front of that robed figure. And when they hit the ship, immediately Moon Dragon is telling them via a, a psychic link that, hey, something's not right with this guy here. Be careful. Got, uh, Peter Quill's got both guns up. He's ready to rock. And this guy introduces himself. He says, I'm Patriarch. I'm the right hand of our resurrected Messiah. And Moondragon tries to warn him to get out of there. Get out now. But it's too late. These, all these purple hanging tubes, the, the tentacles just grab them and wrap them up. I mean, Lockjaw, Beta Ray Bill, uh, Philavel, Gamora, all of them immediately just wrapped up in these tentacles. And when they do, Moondragon just is instantly hit with this pain. And she throws her head back as blood sprays from her mouth and her nose. And she can, she says she can actually feel them being ripped apart. And she understands that this is the universal church of truth. It isn't the ones we fought before. They're from the future. And their engines aren't powered by faith. They're powered by life. And what they do is they steal your will to live. And after she comes out of this seizure, she looks straight at Groot and tells him to run. And they hit the boosters and they are gone. And right when it seems like the Guardians are done for, this robed figure calls them off. And as Star-Lord is sitting there just gasping for breath, just he, this robed figure just kneels in front of him and tells him that that was just a glimpse of the end that we're trying to prevent. It's unfortunate, yes, but we must fill our engines to resurrect our Messiah. He who will kill the final foe. He who will slay death. It's why I sent you that message, Peter. And this rogue figure pulls back the hood, and it's Jason, or Jason. And Peter just looks up and says, Dad, you need to rest, my son. You have much to learn. Take him to his quarters, please. And he looks back over his shoulders. Peter does. He looks back over his shoulders and he sees his his team and just mutters to himself, no, as they all have the purple glowing eyes and they're muttering or they're saying to themselves, have faith. From there, we go back to Groot and Moondragon and they're in some slum. Uh, Moondragon is just torn apart. She's, she's torn up about uh, losing everybody. She can still feel their pain and she's looking up as tears are just rolling and streaming down her cheeks saying, look, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why everyone else on the team seems to hate you, but you have to help save our, and then you get, you get the voice. Yeah, 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 fine. End of the world death cult stuff. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in. I mean, what else do I have to lose? And then you get this shot of Rocket and he is just, he is not in good shape. Now, and, and Rocket split with the Guardians of the Galaxy following the Infinity Wars. Once everything happened with Gamora and the team really didn't get back together. Uh, Drax was, uh, they lost Drax during Infinity Wars. And, and Rocket Raccoon actually went on into the Avengers No Road Home uh, storyline. And how he crossed paths with the Avengers is it was believed he was stealing some equipment from this laboratory when... And, he, and the, the Avengers showed up. He exchanged fire with Hercules and a couple others and ended up actually joining the team. And it ends up that he wasn't stealing anything. He was actually returning it. So we find out that Rocket Raccoon may be ill. He may be sick. He's known he's sick. Uh, we'll probably find out more. Well, I know we'll find out more probably in Guardians of the Galaxy number eight next month. So I'm interested to see what happens with this. I noticed looking at these tubes, they're something about it something around the seals makes it look like it's some kind of it's got the symbiote or something inside of it that i mean this is donny cates we're talking about everything he's done so far with um silver surfer with guardians of the, or not guardians of the galaxy yet but with venom it's all i mean all very much coming back to null in those two storylines i wouldn't be surprised at all if 
this was somehow related to the symbiotes. And we also know, still know from earlier, like I talked about, that the Magus is still out there, and this church used to uh, worship him. However, in the current run of Old Man Quill, I believe the church now worships, worships Galactus. So, is this? how does that tie in? Um, we're going to have to wait and see. I'm, I'm excited to see where this is going, of course, because... Uh, your boy Donny Cates, he can write, and the storyline I'm sure is going to be good. This is the first in what's the first of six on this Faithless storyline, so I'm interested to see where this goes. They did change artists on this. It's no longer Jeff Shaw. It changed to uh, Corey Smith. I don't know much about Corey Smith other than he's done some amazing Spider-Man in the past and uh, I think Weapon H. Um, I, I like this. I, did, I thought the art fell right in, in step with what Jeff John, not Jeff Johns, good grief, with what Jeff Shaw was doing. And it, it's nice when you when you're in a series and ongoing, and they switch artists, and it's not a, a big, you know, it's not jarring. You don't you don't notice it. I I honestly didn't read who the artist was the first time around, and I didn't notice a huge difference. I didn't notice any difference until I went and looked at it after. So overall, definitely a recommend. Go pick this up. Guardians of the Galaxy since issue one has been has been outstanding. I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed the uh, Donny Kate stuff. It's it's been really good. If you force me right now to pick one writer in a Marvel to to follow, it would be Donny Kate's. Followed very closely by Chip Zdarsky. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got for this one. Appreciate you listening. If you haven't, hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave a like, and I always appreciate your comments down below, guys. That's all I got. Real Comic Stacks, out!